one big part I think companies will still continue to benefit from, and this is like, I, I talk to companies all the time, might not come as a, like a surprise, but basically invest in good data-driven optimization for your logistic supply chain, um, how you route, how you place goods, where things are, where your facilities are. So these are still very good things, right? The, the second area, I think it's less talked about. This is um, what we think of as a sort of like the glue in a logistic value chain when it comes to AI and machine learning. So let, let me clarify what I mean by that. So when logistics and supply chain were designed by humans, humans are the glue. These technologies grab headlines saying, well, 95% of the time we do better than human in blah, but turns out that integration between the 95% and the 5% when they cannot is really tricky. And sometimes it sounds a little meta, but why am I like harping on this so hard? It's because the glues are so important. So you would think, okay, without the glue, the thing still works. No, it does not. So not having the glue doesn't mean you just get 80% of the 95%. No, you, oftentimes you get nothing. It just prevents people from making the whole thing work. The, the advantage or maybe the secret sauce to success is oftentimes not a better machine learning algorithm. The winner oftentimes are the glue winners. They are good at developing technology, investing in the product design to, to make that integration much better than their competitors. So I would just say invest in that integration, right? So that's something that probably less talk about, but I think it's super, super important. Companies oftentimes, um, before they jump into the technology, what they truly miss is not like, oh, you, which machine learning technique is the most accurate, but it's the framing and defining the value for the product that they're delivering, right? I think oftentimes the, the thing that's missing uh, is exactly understanding if I had the technology, how much value would that really drive? And I don't mean value in a very abstract sense which is also important, right? Maybe the brand, maybe the company culture, those are very important, but I'm talking about something a bit more concrete, which is you have this technology, can you literally write down a metric and connect that metric to the accuracy, statistical performance of your technology? Does that actually save you money? Surprisingly, that's not an exercise a lot of people do. And what is much more common is they, they believe there's some general capability the technology will bring, and they just go in for it. They're not really clear what success looks like. I do think now um, there will be very substantial seismic changes in the industry uh, as a result of not just potentially step changing AI, but a consistent sustained growth in AI machine learning over the last decade. So yes, I do think companies need to be fearful in the sense of if you're entirely unexposed to this, uh, you do have the chance of being left behind. This thing is real. It's definitely happening. But exactly where it's happening in your company is not so cookie cutter. Not everybody's gonna benefit from an automatic chatbot, right? Um, you might have other technologies that's kind of like coming with generative AI that will insert into your business in ways that you don't see elsewhere. So think about value that will guide you better. If you're a company, um, especially in the logistics space, where your operations are already automated or has the potential of being automated, and furthermore, has a potential being automated in such a way with telemetry, right? With feedback and measurements, then you absolutely should think about AI. I mean, people already are. I guess manufacturing robots um, and logistics uh, warehousing solutions like uh, your company is doing. Um, the, the reason is automation is sort of like the gateway. Uh, without automation, without feedback, uh, these techniques won't have the stage to perform. But once the gateway is open, competition will be up because sooner or later, other people will automate better than you do. So that's definitely an area you want to think about. Anytime, um, essentially, the physical world connects to the net, to the internet, to the databases, um, AI will come in. Moving physical things are difficult to get margin on, right? So because, you know, um, it's a very well established industry, it's hard to differentiate. Um, 
the, the margin often comes from lowering costs than increasing revenue. And that's a very tough place to be in. So, so once you understand that, I think then the question to me is really how do you reduce the friction on every single point of the way? So instead of thinking about AI, I recommend companies first think about where can you reduce friction? That's currently a bottleneck. Once that friction is low, there's so many ways AI can make an impact. And right now, I think that's the biggest bottleneck. Some companies who are successful are really just good at solving that bottleneck. They're not successful because they have the weirdest, most amazing AI team. They, they, they probably do have a good AI team, but that's really not the critical part. The critical part is the, the platform, the operations. Get the operation to the point where computers can move atoms. Right? That's, that's, I would say, is the, the big picture obstacle right now. Um, but I'm, I'm excited. I think, um, you know, the robotics you guys are building um, could be a, a great a step towards that. But uh, overall, yeah, I think uh, companies can use more technology, sometimes not even AI, um, to connect things and to reduce friction. Then we're talking.